All right. So this is one of our last sessions of the day. We have one more session after this one, but this is our second living with FA panel of the day. And for this one, we're focusing on yeah. hobbies, sports, lifestyle. I am Kellen Madden. I'm Ferris patient engagement manager, and I have three FAers on the stage with me here who are all going to tell you guys a little bit about what they do to bring joy to their lives and to bring purpose to their lives. So if we can move on to the next slide, I don't, can I do that with this thing? Let's see. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. I like that. All right. This was the title. We, we just went over the title. All right. So first up we have Alex. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? All right. My name is, uh, I'm Alex Holiday. Um, I live in Florida. I am 28 years old and I've been living with FA since I was five years old. And what are you going to be telling us about today, Alex? And I we can be, kind of see you on the slides. I will be telling you about um, cooking if it's not evident from the slides. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. All right. Next up, we have Anna. Sorry, we're not sitting in the order of the slides I made, but we have Anna next on the slides. Hi, I'm Anna. Um, I live in a suburb right outside of Philadelphia. Um, I recently turned 18 and I was diagnosed with FA um, nine years ago. Um, and my hobby is archery. Thanks, Anna. And then rounding it out, we have Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly Gregory. Can you guys hear Kelly? Okay. Hi, I'm Kelly Gregory. I'm from central Minnesota. I'm 25 years old. I live with my husband and our dog and cat. And I was diagnosed at 13. I'm going to be talking about not really my hobby. It's more of a lifestyle, but um, I'll be talking about health and nutrition and exercise. Thank you. All right. Um, so I think we'll just go down the line and have each of you just tell us a little bit more about your hobby. Maybe you can tell us how you first, or for Kelly Lifestyle, how you first got into it. Alex, how did you first get into cooking? Oh. Well, I would say, um, when I first got into it, um, you know, um, looking back at, um, you know, my, um, uh, family, especially my dad's mother all the time. And, you know, I'm also not lucky, but I'm. Italian, so uh, we like to feed people. Um, and so I just, uh, one day, I don't know, probably about six, seven years ago, just decided that I was going to start fooling around and, um, and, um, cooking up and making recipes for different things and um I figured I had an extreme I had a passion for it and it just and it just grew from there and um about one to two years ago I uh was looking online for um different things like how to make cooking safer and easier for people and I through looking online I realized there wasn't much out there so I decided to start my own YouTube channel um that I call the Handicapable Chef um and that um uh, to that's dedicated to helping make cooking uh safer and easier for well for all people but for mostly 
disabled people like myself. Thanks, Alex. Kelly, do you want to tell us a bit about how you first got into fitness and nutrition? So when I was first diagnosed, there wasn't really any one on social media saying anything about Fujix ataxia. So anyway, uh, a few years ago, I decided to start conquering FA on Instagram and share like my health and fitness tips. Because when I was first diagnosed, like, kind of just feel alone, like there's no one like you. And I don't want other people to feel like that. So I decided to share my life and the two main things that you can control with FA to slow your progression are your nutrition and how much you exercise. So I decided to dedicate my life to all aspects of health and nutrition um, to try to control and slow my progression as much as I could. So. Thank you. And Anna, how about you and archery? How'd you first get involved? Um, so I was diagnosed with that by when I was eight. And at the time, I played a lot of sports like softball and dance. Um, and even years after my diagnosis, I was still able to do those things. Um, but as my symptoms progressed, um, that became harder for me. And so I started archery when I was in middle school. And I played on and off since then. Um, but I've been like really consistent in the past um, like three years of my high school um, career. So thank you. So for Anna and Kelly, both of you guys, it seems like the FA diagnosis eventually led you to, to archery or to fitness and nutrition. Is that correct? Right. And mm -hmm. Alex, how about for you? Were you into cooking before you had FA did it did that interest come about after your diagnosis um I I mean it, you were diagnosed pretty young so pretty yeah. probably after it didn't really uh, notice anything until like I said about six seven years ago when I decided to try it but looking back on life I mean I've several things throughout my life um when I was in elementary school I had a uh project for one of my classes where I had to make a uh make a meal pretty much by myself when I was like seven seven or eight and I would really enjoy enjoyed it or when I was in or when I was in like seventh grade um uh, they had us make a uh model of the cell out of whatever we wanted to do and I decided that I want to do uh, bake, bake some brownies because <laughs> I wanted some food so I I mean although cooking has been um, part of my I, food has been very important in my in my life oh I mean, uh, like I said, um, uh, Italian, so I mean, we like food. Yeah, <laughs> you're kind of bored into that in an, an Italian family. Um, do you remember what meal you made for school when you were seven or eight? Um, no, not really. I don't, <laughs> I don't remember much from childhood. No, that's, that's fair. Okay. So I think we can learn a little bit more about like what what does an average day in the life look like for you guys in terms of what your interests are. Um, since Alex just answered, why don't we start at the other side of the table? Anna, do you want to tell us about like how frequently you're doing archery? Can you only do it during certain times of the year? Things like that. 
Um, yeah, so I go once a week. Um, I go all year. Um, and it's one on one with my coach. Um, and it depends if it's warm outside, then we go to the outdoor ranges, which I really like, um, because cool, me. Um, and then in the winter we go and do it in the indoor ranges. So. And so you said you do it one on one with a coach, and it's not not with a team at school. Is that right? Yeah. Awesome. Kelly, how about you? You you've already said that fitness and nutrition is more of a lifestyle to you. So what is an average day in your life like in terms of how you incorporate fitness and nutrition in? I would say like for an average day, I mean, I either have help like home cooking all my meal most 99% of my meals and every once in a while I'll eat out but usually I home cook like some nourishing meal uh, for breakfast and then like I'll meal prep for lunch go to work come home and then I incorporate my exercise routine and then meal prep supper or not not necessarily meal prep supper probably just as like a meal food prep mm -hmm. supper. And your your job is also connected to fitness and nutrition. Is that right? Yes. So I am a certified personal trainer and I also have my certification in nutrition and group fitness instructor. And then I also teach silver sneakers, which is like exercise for elderly people. Um, and then, yeah, that's my, uh, work. Cool. Do you have like, what kind of group fitness classes do you teach? All sorts of them. Um, some are like for silver sneakers, it's mostly seated exercises and some standing stuff. And then the, we just keep getting more and more advanced during like different classes are more advanced than others so cool um Alex what about you I think the last time we talked it was more of a like weekday versus weekend thing for you in terms of what you're cooking yeah um well, I would say most most weeks um pretty much um every day We'll uh figure out um based on what we're having for dinner that night what um marinade to make for the meat and then and make that in the afternoon and then when my parents get off they help me with the actual part of uh so I don't burn myself or putting it in the oven or putting it on the grill uh, and then the I don't do it often but on the weekends is when if, when my mom or dad help me make more complicated things like my meatballs or tacos um, and you know and then also I mean well there is but um, we're huge football fans, and so, uh, we, uh, every football Sunday, um, we put on a whole spread of food the entire day that we just graze off of the entire day, wing, like wings, tacos, other, other good stuff like that, so, uh, Oh, uh, it's a typical day of my cooking. Is this might be a hard question? Do you have a favorite thing to cook? A favorite meal? It is hard, but 
I have to say, I that um, I would say two of my favorite things that you said are um, uh, I think I make really good tacos. Um, and um, I mean, I um like uh my making my meatballs um my uh, i've had many requests especially from my grandfather and my mom's father who is 100% Italian uh for for he like keeps requesting that he wants my meatballs for his birthday so, wow that's high praise so, so i would say the those would be my uh, two favorite things to make. All right. So if anyone in the audience ever visits Alex, ask for the meatballs. Okay. <laughs> um, and so you said your parents sometimes help you with certain tasks, like putting things into the oven. Are there any other modifications that help you cook? Any tools or things like that that you would recommend to someone else with FA who is starting to cook? Yeah, yeah. I use um a lot of tools. Um I demonstrate um some of them on my uh, uh YouTube videos. But I uh, but I one thing is uh chopping can be hard for like bigger thing. So I use a uh food processor and um but when I do like to cut things, I use like net cut resistant gloves so I don't cut off my finger because I'm clumsy. Or, and, um, you know, I use a, also when I'm cutting, I use a, a, um, uh, anti slip mat so the cutting board will stay where it is the entire time. So I don't have to fight with the cutting board moving all around. Because that's how you cut yourself too. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you have all your fingers. <laughs> um, Kelly, what about you? What types of modifications do you make to help either with your, your job or just your, you know, your own personal fitness goals and things like that? So... It'll be a little side story and then I'll answer you. Yeah. Love a side so story. So when I wanted to become a personal trainer, I really doubted myself at first. Like I was thinking, who wants a trainer that's in a wheelchair? And that's what I thought until I talked to this one lady one time and she probably has no idea who I am, but she made such an influence on my life that she said well who cares that you're in a wheelchair like you you still can get all the certifications and have all the knowledge and everything um and that that changed my perspective so i decided that i did want to pursue pursue doing personal training and nutrition um as my job and when i do have struggles like and I can't show a client a certain workout I have really good co-workers that I film and then I show my clients the the footage of people so that I'm still able to instruct them verbally but then they can see a video of what the exercise looks like and then in my own training I usually do seated workouts or like seated on the floor a lot of floor exercises and then um also some workouts that or some exercises that I can do from in my chair as well great and Anna what kind of modifications do you make if any for archery I think you already said you chose archery specifically because it is accessible to you um, so I use a wheelchair and I do archery in my wheelchair. So 
um, like sitting and making sure that I'm not hitting like my chair with the bow or um, like the ground. Um, and then I also um, have to make sure the height differences are like worked out so like um the target isn't too high so I'm not like I don't know or too low so I'm not like shooting over the target but um yeah so and did it take a good amount of time learning what adjustments you needed to make before you figured out what worked for you um a little bit it definitely took a while um for me to learn like the height differences like I was saying but um yeah cool all right so we have a couple more questions for our panelists um I think I'm I'm really excited we're having this panel be and the travel panel we had earlier as well, because it's just so important to make time to pursue things in life that bring you joy and that can also help with things like mental health and well being because you have those things that make you happy and pursuits and goals. So I'd love it if you guys could talk a little bit about why your interest or your lifestyle is important to you and how does it bring you joy? Alex, do you want to tell us a little bit about? cooking for you okay no I mean I would say it's important to me because it just makes me um happy and excited seeing someone um try try my food and um uh, uh, whether I like it or not and and I know it sounds crazy um, to some of you, but I, I so strangely, when I'm cooking, is um, I I just naturally feel calm, even if a bunch of chaos is going around on around me, I just strangely feel at peace. Um, yeah, just, it's important to me to, um, to just make people, make people happy. And then that's what, uh, cooking, cooking does for me. And let me see if, uh, how happy I make people with my food. That's really nice. Um, do you have any memories about, I th maybe it's your grandfather and, and the meat policy request, but do you have any memories specifically about a time you cooked for someone and and it brought you that joy because they were enjoying it? <laughs> I mean, I mean, oh, I just love it so I could go on time but I would say um one other specific memory it is about my grandfather but it is not about the meatballs um it was my grandfather um obviously um uh, my grandfather um had a mother who cooked homemade Italian for him when he was growing up. So for his 70th birthday, um, my grandfather wanted me to make him a um, chi uh, chicken cacciatore because he hadn't had that since his grandma made it for him when he was a kid. And so seeing him have that for the first time in years and enjoying it was uh pretty was pretty special and it brought me lots of joy knowing that it brought him a lot of joy and memories from when he was a kid 
That's really awesome. So you're kind of continuing a whole family legacy through the cooking that you do and bringing those memories back to your loved ones as well. Uh, yeah, I, a, little, a little bit. I couldn't do. <laughs> um, I'm trying. Yeah, I, it seems like you're succeeding to me. Thank you, Alex. Um, Kelly, do you want to tell us a little bit about what type of joy fitness brings to you, fitness and nutrition? Yeah, so I, like, when I was younger, I hated working out. I absolutely hated it. And it was because all my doctors told me, you have to work out, you have to do this to keep up your strength. And I just, I I didn't like it. Um, It took me a couple of years, but I changed my mindset from I have to do this to I'm able to do this. So uh, I, then I, (laughs) I started to love working out and I wanted to show others, especially those with FA, but, or just like regular people so I started my um my Instagram going back to that and demonstrating all my different workouts that I do and then um like all what vitamins I was taking and different tips on how I would make working out more accessible to me and I was getting a bunch of people like messaging me saying that I helped them and they they showed that they're showed their physical therapist something from my work from my um videos and how much it helped them and that brought me so much joy that I could help people and that was my goal was to help others especially those with that faith to help them not feel alone and then also to help them to learn to live a healthier lifestyle but that became (laughs) sounds weird but it became not good enough for me I wanted more of a in-person thing um to feel that joy like I still love posting on conquering FA and getting all the messages from people but I wanted more of a personal connection to people that I was helping And that's when I decided to do personal training and like a one-on-one client that I could see in person and also the same with nutrition that, that I can help them one-on-one because that really brings me joy helping other people. Um, and then another portion of the story, I, it also brings me joy that I can personally help to slow my progression by nutrition exercise because odds are you're going to progress no matter what so one thing that I can control is my nutrition and exercise that I'm doing and that can help to slow your progression so I really really took off and ran with that well wheeled away with that (laughs) So, and do you want to talk about the videos you shared with me now? Not yet. All right, all right. We uh, we can wait till the end. We'll wait till the end. It's they're good videos, so we can end with that. Um, Anna, do you want to tell us a little bit about why archery brings you joy, or how it brings you joy? Um, so archery is really important to me because um, I like it and I think it's fun and. Um, I have a good time doing it. It teaches me patience and how to maintain a positive um, mindset. And um, yeah, and my coach is definitely strict, um, but she is really encouraging at times. Um, And yeah, she... Um, she knows a lot about the sport and she um, tries to make it the most fun and accessible it can be for me. Um, she actually went to 
the Olympic trials this summer and coached archery there. And she met Snoop Dogg and she showed me pictures. She showed me pictures of that. So I thought that was cool. But um yeah. What what do you think she would have preferred? Like going on in the trials or meeting Snoop Dogg? <laughs> I don't know. It's a hard <laughs> competition between the two. I don't know. Um, can you tell us more about what you meant by keeping a positive mindset and how that relates to archery? Um, so yeah, so it teaches me like patience and like how to maintain a good mindset, like um through like maybe I won't get it on the first few tries. Um, but eventually I can, and it gives me something to work toward, um, like being successful and getting the best, like getting close to balls eyes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess archery is very unique as a sport because you can kind of immediately assess how well you did each, each time you take a shot. So you're talking about remaining positive even if you've had a few a few bad runs and keep looking towards your next shot is that what you're saying yeah yeah that makes sense all right so we have one last question um for the panel and then we can open it up to the audience to see if you have any questions or i can also make up more questions um <laughs> Can you guys tell us um, what advice you would give to someone else with FA or someone else with any type of disability who is thinking about pursuing a hobby or an interest or trying to figure out how to bring more joy into their own lives? What advice would you give them about pursuing that? Alex, you want to start us off? Okay. Um, well, first I would say, um, first thing is, like, Find what um gives what gives you as the individual uh, a great passion because you know it, me it's cooking Kelly it's uh fitness and nutrition and for and it's uh, archery so it's it's it won't, everyone can have doesn't have to have exactly the same thing that they that they want to pursue um second thing i would say is um you know whatever that passion is first i would do like i did and look look through google like you no know, don't just look once and give up like really do a deep dive on the internet and try and find something and if there is nothing don't don't be afraid to uh do like a lot of us did and um start a start a youtube series or a or a instagram page to um to help um get a younger generation um more interested in um in that same hobby or lifestyle <laughs> yeah that's good advice that's good don't be afraid to be a trailblazer Kelly, what's your advice? So as it pertains to health and fitness and nutrition, I would say that all movement is beneficial. There's a saying, use it or lose it. With FA, that is like 5,000% true use it or lose it your muscles will deteriorate so fast so you might as well try everything you possibly can so yeah advice is all movement is great 
move it or lose it or use it or lose it sorry um and then like nutrition wise I guess just ask your doctor for advice but or ask your registered dietitian but I would say try to limit processed foods and eat as whole foods as you can and make sure you take your vitamins make sure you're getting a wide variety of nutrients and colorful food from close as you can to unprocessed and do you have any advice about the pursuit of a hobby or changing the lifestyle or anything like that yeah don't let fa stop you that stopped me for a long time in my career wanting to be a personal trainer was like it stopped me for a long long time because I doubted myself thinking that no one wants a personal trainer in a wheelchair but it that doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair like you're still a person you still have all the knowledge you can still be just like a regular person <laughs> so don't let that face stop you just to overcome it and yeah it's a lot easier said than or it's easier said than done but try to have a positive mindset and overcome fa as much as possible thank you kelly and anna what advice would you give to someone else with fa who is considering pursuing a new hobby or interest um i feel like i'm stealing alex and ellie's <laughs> ideas but um just don't give up and be willing to try new things um because you might not get it on the first try or even the second or even the third but eventually you will and so just don't give up always great advice all right so we're gonna end with some videos kelly shared if we can go all right and i think if i hit the next button it should play the first video okay it played the second one <laughs> You want me to play the next one too? No. <laughs> Just wait. I'll explain this first one first. Okay. So this, I had a goal of getting, we go fishing a lot, my husband and I, and I had this goal to get up from the bottom of the boat to the top of the boat by myself. So I wouldn't always be dependent on my husband to lift me up because it it's kind of hard for him when you pull the boat out of the axis and you're sitting at the axis and he's outside of the boat and I'm still inside in the way bottom of the boat. So it's kind of hard for him. He's a shorter guy. So it's hard for him to reach all the way in, pull me out. And like we weigh the same. So it's, yeah, it's just, it's hard for him to do it. So I wanted to be able to get myself at least up from the bottom of the boat to the top of the boat where it's easier for John to transfer me. So I practiced all winter long of doing tricep dips on multiple different levels. I have like a bunch of different benches in my house working to get that that same level as the boat um, from getting up to the lower deck to lower deck to the top deck. And anyway, I was finally able to do it inside. And the first time I did it, like actually in the boat, I was so like, just so happy. I was like, oh my gosh, did you see that? I don't, I don't know why, but that was just a, something so simple that you set your mind to it and you can achieve like something that seems so simple to other people, but it's not uh, people with that fate. So 
set your mind to something and go for it and achieve it. That's really cool. Especially, um, you had said that when you were younger, you didn't like fitness because people were always telling you, you need to exercise. So I imagine most people, when they hear, let's do some tricep dips, they're like, absolutely not. I don't don't want to do that. But you show that there was a very practical application for doing that exercise and it helped your mobility. So that's really yes. cool. Thanks for sharing that. And then now, now can I do the next video? A splendid purse. Okay. okay. So this Glad next video. So uh, there, there's a backstory behind it and the backstory is why I had so much motivation to do this. So I wanted well, the backstory. So I was um, on a vacation and my husband was gone working throughout the day. And so I was left by myself in a non-accessible um, building and I had to go to the bathroom. Anyway, I ended up falling out of my wheelchair on the floor and I couldn't get up to go to the bathroom. I ended up peeing my pants. And then I sat there for two hours before someone was able to help me. And I told myself that is not happening anymore. So I'm going to be able to get from the floor to my chair. And that was a huge step because I wasn't wasn't able to do it I had tried for for two hours that day crying the whole time because I just peed my pants in a random place and anyway I decided that is not gonna happen again I'm gonna build up the strength to get into my chair by myself I could get into my chair if I like had a grab bar to help me but in a place that you're not familiar with they don't usually have grab bars all over so I decided to work on this every day for for a while and I videotaped myself every day and every single day I would end up falling down and anyway the the one day I was able to do it and the actual video I was so happy and can't play that one because um, the actual video had some swear words in it because I was so happy and so proud of myself. But anyway, so this video shows like all the different time. Well, not all of them. The video would be like five minutes long, but a bunch of different times of me trying to do this transfer and falling on the floor every time and then finally when I was able to do it and just to see that excitement and my husband he was recording me from the other side of the room also and I didn't know he was in the room so so then we got like two different angles and I was just beyond happy so once you put your mind to something you can achieve it even though if it seems impossible at first. Go ahead. It's all got to say no. Yeah. I used to be stuck in that. But yeah, I was down, but now I'm up, 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 up. I was down, but now I'm up. Yeah. It's all got to say no. Yeah. I used to be stuck in that. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Like my name is Ethan, it's no Satan gonna be bad. Once I had to ask my dad if it's okay to sweep my bed, this he said. So honestly, that that like it still brings tears to my eyes and I get a little goosebumps because <laughs> I'm just like Every single time I see that video, like, um, and this was months ago that that happened. And still, it every single time I get so, like, just 
so proud of myself that I was able like to accomplish something and I mean this is way more important to me than the the boat transfer because this is like you never know when you're going to be on the ground and to get up in your chair so yesterday um I was at the 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 gym in our hotel and I did my workout and then still got up into my chair and that just like it proves that you're you're able to do a lot more than you think so set your mind to something get out there and do it <laughs> thanks kelly and thanks also to alex and anna for sharing these parts of your lives and and giving everyone here evidence that you can do the things that you set your mind to um even if you have to make some changes and adjustments along the way and give yourself lots of patience um i hope you never stop feeling proud about that accomplishment and all three of you guys i i hope you can continue doing what you love and finding joy in it and being proud about the things that you do for yourself and that you do for other people I'd love to open it up to the audience if anyone here has any questions for our panelists and the amazing things that they do. Multiple questions coming. I just want to say that you all inspire me greatly. Thank you for who you are and what you're sharing. It, you are amazing. Yeah, congratulations to all three of you for finding your passion because it takes some people their whole lives to find that and you found it early. So um, just a, a couple of comments and then a question. So archery did it in high school and I, I was horrible at it. So, <laughs> so I commend you because I can't even imagine. <laughs> um, and as for, you know, the boat, that is really a big deal. I come from a fishing family. My my son's passion is fishing and so is his dad's. And um, getting yourself up that, the, it's not just getting yourself up that the boat's doing this and this yeah. and this. So it's a lot harder than most people would think. So congratulations, I, that is pretty impressive actually. And then I have a question for Alex. Where do you get your inspiration? for the meals you make? Do you read cookbooks? Do you go on the internet? Do you use family recipes? Do you just look at all the spices and say, hmm, I wonder if those would taste good together? Um, well, it, um, I would say that oftentimes I look at uh, different cookbooks. I have a lot of cookbooks. Uh, and look at a recipe and I'm like, oh, that looks good, but I don't like this. So uh, a lot of times I'll, and then also like, oh, we don't have that in the house. So sometimes I would say it's mostly from uh, uh, cookbooks. Pinterest is also your best friend when it comes to cooking. Um, and then I just, a lot of times I tweak stuff um, using whatever we have in the house. Um, one thing I did figure out about myself earlier, just I, I, I have a pretty keen sense of what, uh, spices and herbs and other other ingredients uh, go well together. Uh, so it just I I don't know where it really comes from uh, some of it most of it, I would say, comes from uh, from my own mind tinkering around with stuff. 
Cool. We, we have another question, I think. Okay. Hi, my name is Noah Pepe. I have Pepe as well, but this is a question pretty much for Kelly. Um, I've recently gotten into working out and nutrition too. But when you have a bad FA day, like say you don't get enough sleep or you're not fully hydrated, how do you push through that and stay motivated to still get the most out of your workout or out of your day? Honestly, it's really hard, but I still think that doing something is better than nothing. So even if like... Okay, so we'll just take, for instance, a couple weeks ago, I did not sleep, like, at all. And the next day I was going to work out, and I was like, it's going to be a short workout, but I'm still going to work out at least some. So you're still getting some movement, but I guess mainly just listen to your body, but also try to push yourself somewhat because you... You never regret a workout or unless you get hurt. But honestly, like I haven't regretted a workout like because the mental clarity, like, I don't know, you just end up feeling better after workout. Maybe not physically, but mentally you'll feel better. <laughs> and then physically you'll end up getting stronger. So or or in our case slowing their progression <laughs> so did that answer okay anna do you ever experience that with your archery having a bad fa day um yeah definitely um because of the patience that archery teaches me though um i feel like over time i've been able to get more or be more, um, like, open to having bad days and, like, fine with it. I think before, when I was in middle school, I used to cry um, when I was really frustrated with it. Um, but now I don't, so. Yeah, so it taught you that this will pass and you'll have a good day, maybe tomorrow, maybe in a couple of days. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience? There's bright lights in my eyes, so I can't see everyone. <laughs> yeah. I think everyone, three, three people up there with AFA who are fighting every day, getting through it, and living great lives. Got another question. Uh, question slash story, because I've had the privilege to cook with Alex before. And I got to tell you that he likes a big meatball. He does not like small meatballs. He's very passionate. And I got really challenged by him because he didn't want to make the small meatballs that I was suggesting. We had to have the big balls. But if you have a chance, it, it was... To, his passion, my passion coalesced for a couple of days and we got to cook together and it was an honor. Alex is right about the size of meatballs. <laughs> he gets he gets it. Um my question is uh for each of your um passions. Do you have like a milestone, like a next milestone in mind that like you're working toward for, for it? That's a great question. Go ahead. I hope I answer, but you can go ahead. Okay. Um, so actually, uh, um, my next real milestone that I'm working towards, um, is, um, finishing up i'm working on uh writing my own 
uh, cookbook. So my next milestone is getting that, getting that finished and getting that published and yeah, accomplishment that that'll that that'll be because I've been working on that for several years now. It's a huge accomplishment. Thanks for asking that question. Otherwise, we never would have known yeah. that. That's awesome. Okay, so my next goal seems a little out of reach right now, but it's not out of reach. I will accomplish it. I want to be able to do a pull-up. Sounds simple for like regular people. Like my husband just makes it look so easy and then mm -hmm. I'm just even more jealous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that is my goal. So I practice like I mean, not daily, but I practice probably every other day. And then once a week, I take a progress video um, just to see how much more I'm improving. Not even close right now, but at some point I will get there. So that's my goal that I'm working on right now. Yeah. I don't, I don't. Maybe I just have really bad upper body strength, but that does not sound like an easy thing to me. So yeah, that's going to be awesome. Anna, what about you? Um, so as of right now, um, I'm trying to work on having the target farther away from me when I'm shooting. Right now, it's pretty close. Um, but I'm trying to get it farther away to... So. That's what I'm working on, but thank you for the question. All right, I'm not sure. Um, Jamie, do we have time for more questions or is it time to move on to the last session of the day? I think we're good. Maybe we'll take a short break and then wait for the others to join from their breakout session. Um, what time is it now? Be back like 4.15, 4.20. We'll probably start 4.15. Okay. We're staying on time. You heard it from Jen. 4.15. We're starting the last session. Thanks again to our awesome panelists.